You know how many animals have gone extinct? A lot. And there are some that go extinct altogether, and then there are some that are locally extinct, like the gray whale, which was completely wiped from the Atlantic Ocean. And we have to go all the way back to the 18th century to find it, way back in 1725. A guy by the name of Paul Dudley wrote this about whales that could be seen off the coast of New England. In his essay, he noticed one of them having a grayish color. And that was the last known documentation of a gray whale in the Atlantic before they went extinct there until at least last week. Scientists from the New England Aquarium spotted a gray whale swimming near the water of Nantucket, Massachusetts, something that hasn't been seen in that area in over 200 years. Uh, gray whales are usually found out here on the west in the Pacific Ocean, but in the last 15 years, five whales have been spotted in Atlantic and Mediterranean waters. The aquarium says this whale is most likely the same whale that was spotted off the coast of Florida last December. So joining us now is biologist and wildlife conservationist Jeff Corwin. Jeff, uh, so this is the same whale? Is this? I mean, I've been told, and I got a chance to go down to Baja, California. I've been told very specifically, all gray whales are Mexican. They're all born in that area. Is this one of those whales that made its way over to the Atlantic somehow? Or are we looking at a whole different set of gray whales in the Atlantic? Good evening, Getty. It is likely the same species of gray whale that you find along the Pacific coast, uh, coastline from Alaska, clear on, clear on down to, to Mexico. And of course, we love seeing them gather in, in Baja, where people can actually interact and experience the wonders of these whales. There's about 14,000 of these gray whales. And historically, they would have been spotted in England two centuries ago or more, they became regionally extinct, which we call extirpated, but because of climate change, because of the warming waters way up north, that ice stretch uh, known as the, uh, the Northwestern Passage has opened up, creating a oh. new navigating exploration opportunity for these incredible marine mammals. Wow, that, that, that is fascinating. So, uh, and speaking of whales, turning gears a little bit, while one whale species seems to be making this comeback, or at least uh, veering off because of uh, effects of climate change, another one, the North Atlantic rail, whale, um, that one seems to be going extinct, right? What can you tell us about that and, and what's threatening that whale? Absolutely. So we're actually looking at the, the, the curtain of extinction closing around the North Atlantic right whale. Uh, there's only about... Uh, 360 of these whales surviving today, only 70 surviving females. And what's wiping these animals out is they migrate from uh, colder waters in Canada, New England, down to uh, warm waters off of Florida, where they uh, feed there in the winter, then they come up north to reproduce. And as they come up north, they get struck by ships and shipping lanes. They also get entangled in uh, commercial fishing gear. So the great news is that NOAA, uh, the uh, National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration, is laser focused on saving the species. And a key component to saving the North Atlantic right whale are sanctuaries. So uh, we have what we call uh, national marine sanctuaries. Think of these as like a national park in a marine environment, but they're managed by NOAA. And we have a sanctuary off New England, a spectacular one known as Stowagon Bank. They head their way to sanctuaries off of Florida. But we're really in a fight to save the species. Females now breed only seven to 10 years. They should be breeding once every three years. The mortality of females has gone from living upwards to 100 years plus to about 45 years. They're in serious trouble. They're not replacing themselves. They're on the brink of extinction. So if we're going to save them, Gaddy, it's going to be today. Thankfully, NOAA's focused in this. Uh, incredible organizations uh, like the uh, National Marine Sanctuary Foundation are working alongside to try to save these species. And, and I mean, you brought up breeding. Uh, I didn't know how to broach this next topic, but I got to You're going to go there, aren't you? <laughs> I have to. I don't even know if we're going to show the picture. Why not? But it's late. I, I, I mean, there's some bed, pictures so. out there of, of whales doing it. It's a pretty uh, it's a pretty historic picture from what I understand. Don't look too closely at that one, I guess. Um, oh, you don't what, have to look closely we... at all. It's all right there. It's spread <laughs> all the ways across my computer screen. 
I know. Um, sorry. Yeah, we I mean, were very... debating on do we blur underwater or not. No, <laughs> What's hey, happening it's here? It's nature. <laughs> it's hey, it's nature, right? The birds do it, bees do it, and even <laughs> giant no whales else. do it. So, uh, yeah, they're very randy, um, and they have uh, very rich sexual lives, and they reproduce, and they have courtship. And uh, and here we see you know, pushing other boundaries when it comes to reproductive behavior. So uh, it's pretty incredible. I've actually been there watching whales uh, reproduce there, and I'll tell you what, it's very intimidating to be in a very small boat watching a big whale having a lot of fun. Uh, I bet. Uh, Last question, I promise. There's some talk about using AI to talk to whales, to talk to whales first, right? I'm not sure if you've seen this. And then there's this whole discussion on, wait, should we, should humans talk to whales and like what the ethical implications of conversing with whales would be? Have you, have you thought about that at all? Well, it is interesting. As we know, cetaceans, which are the whales and the dolphins and the porpoises, are very intelligent. They have big brains. Those brains are uh, used for navigating. Some of them will use echolocation uh, to actually literally sonar their way through their environments. Those big brain tells us that there's some maybe some complex thought and behaviors going on there, and they do communicate. They have these incredible complex uh, languages that can travel for many miles under the ocean. I believe by better understanding them, having a window into the worlds of communication will give us a better appreciation for them. NOAA is doing a ton of research in this. By better understand whales, we know that we compete with whales with sound. A lot of the Mm -hmm. noise pollution we produce impacts the survival of whales. So I say if we can figure out, if we can crack that nut and figure out what these animals are saying, maybe we'll appreciate them more and have better better tools to protect them. And maybe even give them a little bit more silence. Jeff Corwin, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, Next time you go whale watching, we'll learn how to speak to them and we'll maybe get some information about their love life. There you go, yeah. Next time you're on a G-rated whale watching tour, I'd love to come. Thank you so very much for joining us. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.